let's retrieve the values the user might have set up. Let's make our option usable. In the visual.ts file, it'll all start by me creating a new interface here. I'll name this interface bar chart settings because that is what it's about. I want to enable the user to change some settings. We only have one setting here, but of course you could add more and it's enable access. And in there we will have a show property, which is a Boolean. And that's just what we set up, right? That is what we set up in our capabilities to JSON file. We have a show property, which is type as a Boolean. So now we have a representation of that in this interface. This is not strictly required, but again, it's a good practice so that we have our own types we can use in the end. And now we can use these settings. I'll start using it here in my visual transform function at the top where I define my default data info here. I'll also define my default settings and this will be of type bar chart settings. Of course, this interface we just created and I will assign a JavaScript object here where I have enable access, which in turn is a JavaScript object where I set show to false because, and that's just my default. You may change this by default. I won't show the access. And of course you could set this to true to show it right now. It won't have any effect though. So that is getting or setting up the default settings. But of course we want to get the settings the user entered and we can get this also in the visual transform function because just like the user enters data, which we handle here, the options are also part of the user input. So after checking the data is there and so on, and maybe after setting up the color, but before the for loop here, maybe that's a good place to extract the options the user set up. So here we could create a new variable bar chart settings and uh, set this then equal or first of all to type bar chart settings and then set it equal to the extracted settings. And now for that, I will create a helper method because we will actually need to go through all the possible settings and retrieve the one we're looking for. So in the end, we will have an object here and in this object, we obviously will have our enable access property, which is an object, but show, as I mentioned, will then be retrieved from some helper method. Now I'll create this helper method in this file too, above visual transform. Maybe I'll name, name it, get option value. The name is totally up to you. It's a generic type function here because I don't care about which type of option it is. If it's a Boolean, a string, whatever. And here I'll have all my objects. Object means options the user can set basically. That is of type data view object, a type defined by the Power BI visual tools. I'll then have the object name I'm looking for because with get option value, I want to get one specific option, the enable access here. This should be a reusable function, which allows me to easily get access to the option I'm looking for. I'll also be able to pass a property name, which is a string and a default value, which of course is of our generic type, because again, this function should be usable for any type of option. And I will return the generic type in the end, the data I got in the end, the option setting. So that's my function. Now we can first of all, check if we do have any objects, because if we don't, then we don't need to go any further. No options were set up and we, we can't extract anything. As a next step, I want to get my object from all the objects. So from all these options, objects, you could say, which matches the object name I was looking for. So if I was looking for enable access, this should now be stored. This means the object with the value the user set and so on should now be stored in this object variable here. As a next step, I want to check if this is set. So it is null if we didn't get it. Otherwise it is a JavaScript object. And now I want to extract the specific property I'm looking for the show property in our case. Remember that is what I set up here. So here, in my object, I want to extract the property I'm looking for. It will be of type T, a generic type again, because I don't care about the specific type. And then I will cast this object and then access my property name there. This now gives me the property I'm looking for. 
And this again could be null. So I check if property is not equal to undefined to be precise. So if we did find it, and if I did find it, then I want to return the property. Otherwise, if any of these if statements fails, I want to return the default value which we passed to this function. So that's my helper function. And now I can use that helper function down here where I want to assign a value to show. I can now call get option value. And here I want to pass the array of options or of objects as they are called here, then the property I'm looking for and my default setting of course, and the option I'm looking for, I forgot that. So get option value. I'm looking for a Boolean in this use case here. Keep in mind, it's a generic function because in other options, we might be looking for a string or something like that. And here, I can then reach out to my objects. And what are my objects? We need to retrieve these. So let's do that first before assigning it here. I can get my array of objects by accessing my data views, oops, not values, data views, here, the first data set we got, it's limited to one, keep that in mind. And then here, on the metadata, a property provided by Power BI, on the metadata, I can now retrieve my objects. And these are just these options, objects I was referring to. So now I got objects which I passed to this helper method or helper function it is. Then as a string, I'm looking for enable access, the name you set up here. And then we want to retrieve show this name here. So we do this by now as a third argument, passing another string show, that's the property name and our default setting. Well, we got the default settings object defined up here. So it's on this default settings, enable access show property that I want to extract. If we don't find a user setting, that would be the false case here that we don't show an access. With that, we're extracting the user value. Now we can start using it. For that, in the value I return here, I need to return my settings too. So let's adjust our bar chart view map model to also pass some settings of type bar chart settings here. With that in place, we need to right now see here's an issue. That should be our default settings here. And at the very end of this visual transform function here, of course, I also want to set my settings and here I simply want to return my bar chart settings, which we derived a few seconds ago here. Now we can use it in the update method as always, because there is where we want to show or not show this axis. How can we do that? Well, first of all, I want to create a new property in the class private bar chart settings, which will be of type of bar chart settings like that. I'll initialize it here right at the start of the update method here where I retrieve height and width too. even before I do this, I'll set this bar chart settings equal to transformed data settings. It now has the settings properties and that is what we defined. And now with that settings extracted here, we can use it here where we define the height to give extra room for the access. Well, we don't want to do that if we don't want to show one, right? So we can check if this bar chart settings enable access show, if that is true, in which case I want to do my height adjustment here. In other cases, I won't do it. So by doing this simple trick here, this simple code line here, I'm making sure that the access only has room if enable access show is set to true. Otherwise, we don't execute that line and then there is no room to display the access. So that is the thing I wanted to hear. However, strangely enough, if I now save this and reload my code here, we don't see the access that makes sense because by default we set it to false, but I still don't have an option here to change my access. Because there's one tiny piece of code missing, one function, one method we actually have to implement to allow Power BI to pass our own options to our code. Let's do this in the next lecture.